Hi folks, don't worry, you're not going mad. This is the same video I put up last week. I just felt I needed to give you a bit of an update in light of information about the bike that I didn't know at the time of filming. This information is regarding the legality of this bike for use on the roads here in the UK. In order for an e-bike to comply with UK regulations, it needs to have a motor that produces no more than 250 watts of power. The motor on this bike, although it's stamped 750 watts, is limited. It's electronically limited to 250 watts, giving a maximum speed of 50 miles per hour. So it's all good there. That's kind of within the regulation, but there is an issue with the throttle. I didn't know about this at the time, but apparently having a throttle puts this bike into the e-moped uh, classification, which means it needs to be registered with the DVLA. It needs to be insured, it needs to be MOT'd, it's got to have indicators, <laughs> and you've got to wear a full motorcycle helmet when you're riding it. Now there is a fairly simple modification you can do to remove the throttle, and that's what I've done to my bike since filming the last video. The throttle has a cable which sends a signal from the, from the trigger to the control unit, and this cable has a plug on it. So it's a simple case of just pulling that plug out, I then smeared some silicon into the kind of socket end of the plug and then I cut the cable completely off where it goes into the throttle housing itself. I also cut off the actual throttle lever on the housing and I've sealed that up with silicon so it's permanent, it's a permanent fix. You can't actually remove the throttle assembly as it's part of the manual gear shifter but I have in effect removed the throttle, it no longer works, it's not there anymore. In my mind I've modified the bike to comply with UK regulations, you can only use it while you're pedaling, then the motor kicks in and gives you assistance as per the law. Although it doesn't have the UK conformity sticker on the frame. So whether that would be enough to convince the police if I ever got stopped, hopefully, <laughs> but, but who knows. If you're considering buying this bike or any other e-bike with a hand throttle and you're concerned about it, check the regulations in your country because they do vary. I know in the US, for example, and several other countries where they have more relaxed e-bike regulations, you can enjoy the full 750 watts higher speed and use of the hand throttle. Like I said, I didn't know about the throttle issue when I made the original video, so sorry about that. I should have done my research more thoroughly, and thank you to those of you who pointed it out in the comments. Right, let's get on with the video. Hi folks and welcome back. If you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you'll know I don't really do product review videos as such. Um, but every now and again, something comes along which is interesting and exciting. And I know I'm gonna get loads of questions about my new electric bike based on the last video I did where I rode it up the Pedder's Way. <laughs> so this video is all about that bike. Um, I'm gonna go through the spec, I'll go through the features and give you my thoughts um, on how the bike performed on that trip. Plus I promised Fido that I would, uh, I would do a review for them as they were kind enough to send me, send me the bike in the first place. I'd actually had my eye on this bike before Fido emailed me. Um, Andy has one and he did a video using it and I, I really like the look of it. It's got that kind of almost military paratrooper bike look to it. <laughs> it's a cargo bike so it can carry loads of gear and it's got an impressive range. So I was thrilled when Fido agreed to send me this, the T1 Pro, instead of the, the M1 Pro, I think it was, that they wanted to send me in the first place. Right, let's go and take a look. So starting with the tires, we've got 20 inch by four inch fat bike tires here. Uh, really wide, loads of traction, um, and really nice and grippy on the road, 
good on tracks and sandy paths and things like that. Plenty of um, plenty of traction, even on sand on the beach. As long as it's not really dry, deep sand, um, you know, you can you can buzz along on the beach on this thing, no problem. The only thing I found on my trip was that in slick, wet mud, it just hasn't got enough grip. And I found that the front wheel was, was slipping and sliding and I actually ended up coming off the bike a couple of times on that trip. Um, but that was more, you know, your kind of clay soil mud um, where it's, it's just slick and, and really sort of greasy and, and slippery. The wheels are solid cast aluminium construction and powder coated. So there's no spokes to break, good and, good and solid and tough. And for braking, we've got hydraulic disc brakes with these nine inch rotors, plenty of stopping power there. To soak up the bumps, we've got front suspension forks with about three inches of travel and they're adjustable. So you can lock them off completely and turn them into rigid forks or you can adjust them depending on how much suspension you want. And that makes for a much more comfortable ride. And then to keep the mud and rain from flicking up onto you, we've got some chunky wide mud guards front and back. The frame is thick aluminium tubing, nicely welded and reinforced with gussets for strength. And it's got two different positions for mounting water bottle cages or for gear or whatever. It's a comfortable geometry with a step through frame. So it's easy to get on and off the bike without having to stretch your leg over the crossbar. The rack here forms the structure of the back of the bike. Instead of having seat stays, which normally come down to your back wheel, like you'd have on a conventional bike, the rack is that support, that strength. Um, and it's really strong, thick tubing again. Um, you've got the, the battery which sits behind the, um, behind the seat tube here. I'll come to that in a minute. I'll come to all the kind of workings in a minute. Um, and then you've got the, you know, the cargo carrying section behind that. This bike will carry 200 kilograms, which is a huge amount of weight, um, which is obviously why this is so kind of over-engineered and strong here. The only downside is that if you want to use panniers on this bike, I don't think you'll find any which have clips that will fit over this tubing. Um, I've got a set of Ortlib panniers and they have quite big kind of hooks on them. They won't fit on here. So unless you're going to use those panniers which wrap right the way over, um, you're not going to be able to attach your panniers. I may end up adding an additional rack to the side of these, um, you know, fixing it somehow so that I can use my conventional panniers. But you can still load plenty of gear on top of the rack here. And that's what I did when I did the pedas way. I had a big bag on here, a big dry bag. It's got this solid sturdy front basket which unusually is bolted to the frame, which is a little bit weird. <laughs> Normally your basket would be, you know, on the handlebars. So it would turn with your handlebars as you turn. This one stays in line with the frame, which takes a little bit of getting used to. I had to make sure when I packed this up for my trip, everything was low down in here. I had my camera bag in here and a big dry bag, which I had to put to the front so that it didn't catch on my handlebars as I was steering. It's got this massive, <laughs> LED headlight on the front here and LED rear lights which run off the the e-bike battery and this has a dipped beam and a high beam setting so you can have it on a kind of wide beam uh, just lighting up in front of the bike or on high beam it kind of shines a bit further down the road gives you a bit more um, visibility ahead. The seat's really comfortable there's loads of thick padding it's sprung loaded and there's a suspension seat post as well to soak up the the bumps of the trail I did find that I had to tighten up these bolts here that hold the seat onto the seat post insanely tight. Uh, the seat just kept moving around under my weight and I had to just tighten that up super, super tight and that's held since. There's a little lever on the back of the seat itself to access the battery, which then slides out of its cradle behind the seat for charging and then slides back in and your seat goes back down again. And then lastly, before I start talking about the, the motor and the gearing and everything, handlebars are these riser bars here, which give you a nice kind of upright riding position, very comfortable. And these grips here, which have these kind of like wider bits here, they spread the load um, onto the palm of your hands, comfortable for, for long rides. And we've got a short little riser stem there. So it's all, all very nice and comfortable. On the right-hand side here, we've got the rear brake lever. We've got our standard bicycle gearing which I'll show you in a minute. That'll all make sense how that works with the motor and everything in a minute. And we've got a throttle control. So that's for using the electric bike in pure electric mode without pedaling at all. That's the throttle. On the left-hand side, we've got the front brake lever. We've got the control unit for the, for the motor. And I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I think it might be easier to explain if I show you the workings and then come back to this, if, if that makes sense. We've got some headlight controls. So we've got dip beam and full beam and <laughs> the horn. 
We've got a standard seven speed Shimano Tawny rear derailleur here like you'd find on a normal push bike. So that enables you to either just ride this normally as you would do a, a normal bicycle without any power or to use it in power assist mode. So you'll still go through the gears as you would do normally, but there's a motor inside the hub here which will kick in to give you assistance up to a certain speed depending on what setting you're in. There are three settings. The hub here has a big 750 watt motor in it which will push you along quite happily at 15 miles an hour in either power assist mode or full electric. So you can just literally twist and go. You haven't actually got a pedal and you can just buzz along like a kind of scooter or moped really. Um, yeah, good powerful motor. And that's coupled with a 48 volt battery. Um, the combination of those two give this bike a really impressive range. Uh, Fido claim it'll do up to 150 kilometers in power assist mode or 100 kilometers on full electric. Um, as I said in my last video, you know, test conditions <laughs> are one thing. Uh, the real world is something else. You know, I'm sure when Fido do their testing, it is under, you know, optimal conditions in the warm and, and on the flat and, you know, nice smooth surfaces and all the rest of it. Um, you know, if, you, if you're actually using it loaded up with weight and, and you put hills um, into the equation and all the rest of it, you're probably not going to get that sort of... Um, that sort of range out of it. But having said that, I squeezed 74 miles out of the battery when I did my recent Pedder's Way trip. That's nearly 50 miles on the trail itself, mostly off-road, and then another 17 miles around to Kingsland to get my train, and then another seven miles uh, from, the, from the train station to get home. And I still had a little bit of juice left in the battery. I don't know how much, I don't know how much further it would have gone. It was all flashing at me furiously, <laughs> but I made it on one charge. I think that's uh, fantastically impressive. To be honest, that was a, a bit of an extreme extreme test for it. I'm sure if I went out in the summer, um, just me on the bike, um, I could uh, you know I could probably get somewhere a bit more a bit more close to to their um, you know their claim of of what the range the true range is. The controller here gives you a load of information. We've got uh, battery condition along the top there, so there are five bars, and they progressively go down as you drain the battery down until there are no bars and you've just got the outside shape of the battery there which flashes at you and that's kind of like the last setting and that's how it was when I <laughs> when I got home but it had been flashing like that for uh, 11 miles something like that um, so that's obviously kind of like the last bar if you like you go through the five bars and then the last bar is the battery flashing um, you've got speed and you can change that from miles per hour to kilometers an hour I've got mine in miles and then you've got a kind of odometer at the bottom there for some reason, every time I turned the controller off and turned it back on again, it reset that to zero, which was a bit annoying. I kind of uh, would have liked to have known my complete trip distance, but um, yeah, that just sort of reset itself. And then you've got different settings according to what power setting you want. So at the moment it's in one. If I press that once, that will go to power setting two and then to three and then to zero. So when there's no number there, you're in pure cycling mode, no power at all. So in the first setting, that will give you power up to about nine miles an hour, um, after which, you know, it's down to your own efforts to, to keep going. Um, but it's great because when you come to a hill and you slow down, that's when the motor kicks in and it just gives you that assistance, like a, like a hand on your back pushing you up the hill. Uh, setting two um, is up to about 12 miles an hour, I think it was, and setting three up to 15 miles an hour which is the the UK or the European limit. For pure electric mode you just stop pedaling and you use the throttle there. Press that down and away you go. So that's my new electric bike. It's a lot of fun especially in pure electric mode just buzzing along with the throttle <laughs> but um, also nice to have a bit of power on the hills. Um, there aren't very many hills in Norfolk to be fair but when I do hit one, it's nice to have a bit of assistance to get to get up them, um, especially when I'm fully laden. I'm going to use this bike as a mode of transport to get to camps so that I haven't got to drive all the time. It's always a worry for me leaving my leaving my vehicle unattended by the side of the road when I'm off in the woods camping. Um, and this will just take that take that worry away. I can I can ride there. I can load that up with all the gear I need. It takes huge amounts of weight um, and then I can stash the bike up in the woods, hide it up, cover it in foliage. Um, and then after my camp, I can, uh, you know, get back on my bike and ride home. And uh, just, yeah, don't have to worry about it. Don't have to worry about my, uh, my Land Rover getting broken into or anything like that. Um, I'm also going to use it for work. I'm a, I'm a carpenter. And uh, because I drive an old Land Rover, which is temperamental, <laughs> there are often times when it's off the road um, being fixed. So uh, it'll be nice to have an alternative 
means of getting to work. I can put a box or something on the back, I can load it with the tools I need, and I can get to work and back. And um, yeah, it's a nice bit of peace of mind, a nice bit of backup. It's certainly a, a quirky looking thing, that's for sure. <laughs> but it's got, it's got a little nod to the old paratrooper bikes of World War II, I think. I don't know whether it's the colour or, uh, or the rack on the back or what it is, but um, yeah, there's definitely something about it that, that really appeals. And it's got a good range, it's tough, and it can carry a whole shed load of gear. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be perfect for my needs, that's for sure. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.